Thank you very much. Um, it's my great pleasure to give a mini course in this um, beautiful workshop in a beautiful city. So this is my second time to visit Vienna. So the first time was 20 years ago <laughs> for sightseeing. So this time is um, the first time for me to visit this city for research. So uh, my research area uh, is mainly in discrete integrable systems and related uh, various mathematics, like uh, representation theory of quantum group, or algebraic geometry, and tropical geometry, which is one of the main topic of this conference. And um, recently, I also use cluster algebra and many combinatorial things. So today, uh, I'd like to give a history and overview of some uh, special topics in integral systems like Kurtzweig de Vries equation and total lattice. And I will give, uh, uh, how to say, uh, overview of my talk. And after that, I will start my main part. So um, actually, the history, it is very brief. One. So uh, start with uh, the discovery of uh, KDV equation in uh, 1945 uh, by Russell. So he found a solitary wave uh, in the canal in England. In a canal, so so it's it's like this one. So the shape of the wave is preserved. The velocity is constant. And one day, um, he found such an interesting uh, phenomenon. Then, um, but it was difficult to formulate this equation. And in 1940, uh, sorry, 1918, 1905. And the Kortbeck and and this freeze. Kortbeck and and the freeze and succeeded to uh, formulate this interesting solitary moving wave by using a differential equation. So u is uh, in, uh, independent variables for dynamic. So it means uh, the height of waves and. It depends on time and space, and the both uh, real uh, values, uh, because it is a physics originally. And the equation is uh, ut, it means the uh, first derivative uh, of u with respect to t plus 6u times ut plus the third derivative of uh, u, zero. This is a famous Kurtzweig uh, de Vries equation. And uh, we call uh, this KDV equation for short. Or maybe it's, <laughs> it's first. Oh, it's not. <laughs> And uh, because in that age, uh, there is no computer, so it was difficult to analyze this uh, partial differential equation in fact three. But in 1965, um, the machinery of calculation was developed, and uh, Zabuski and Kusko Um, studies a uh, many detailed property of this equation. And the symmetry uh, of soliton and was uh, unveiled uh, gradually, and they call uh, that solitary wave as uh, so soliton. So uh, in physics, so particle-like uh, things are named by using this term. So photon or electron, and that way, and they name 
a solitary moving wave uh, solitons. Then uh, they found uh, to uh, study the symmetry of this equation by introducing the Lux pair. So this is a differential operator, pair of differential operators. Um, L is uh, del uh, to there plus u, and this means a differential operator. So there is uh, dx, and uh, it acts on u as uh, ux plus u del like this. So the definition of this operator, and as a pair, so we have another uh, differential operator. Uh, four del uh, cube plus three del u plus uh, three u del like this. Then um, they found that that KDV equation is formulated as the commutator of these two operators. So the time derivative of L is uh, L M minus M L. So I write it as this one by following the physics uh, terminology. And so if once we can formulate this equation as this, this is called Lux form or Lux equation. And this L is called uh, Lux matrix. So once we have uh, such a formula, then, and the trace of any power LK of uh, this operator uh, is preserved. It means that, uh, that uh, this value doesn't depend on time. So uh, for K is any integer like this. So we want to get uh, this kind of Lux form for a given equation as the first step to study this equation. This is a story for Kurt-Bell Fries equation. And uh, as another example, I'd like to introduce to the lattice. So uh, this is uh, found by Toda uh, in 1967 as a chain of nonlinear springs. So um, that its equation of motion is given as follows. So now uh, dependent variable, so dynamic, uh, is on the lattice, like this. It is a chain, and uh, Xn is located at the n, n site. And this is a dependent variable. And it depends on continuous time, too. Then the equation of motion is as follows. Now, we, I again uh, use a physical description. This dot means a uh, derivative with respect, with respect to the time. So it's a second derivative. And it's given by exponential xn plus minus uh, n xn plus 1 minus xn minus exponential xn minus xn minus 1. So this is a total lattice equation. Maybe it's better. So um, this is also have soliton solution and uh, on the, this, this discrete lattice. And in 1974, uh, Frasca uh, introduced the Lux pair for this equation. So like, um, I don't uh, write a detail for the total lattice case, but we uh, can have a pair of toridiagonal matrices. In this case, if we assume n is uh, n takes all integers, the size of matrix is infinite, um, but Anyhow, so matrices and equation is now uh, has the same form as the KDV case. 
So the time derivative of the Lux matrix L is uh, written as this one. So total lattice the equation is equivalent to uh, this matrix equation. And uh, by, the, by following the same um, logic and the trace of any power of Lux matrix is preserved for any K. Yes. Ah, yes, thank you very much. So uh, this trace means to pick up the coefficients of delta to zero there to zero, it is meaning of trace. Then, uh, sorry? Yes, yes. Yes, yes, right, right, final, yes. And so uh, I'd like to recall uh, basic properties of soliton uh, now. So as I explained, uh, this solitary wave uh, moves, each wave moves uh, to the right, for example, uh, with constant velocity. And bigger soliton is, uh, so how to say that, uh, velocity of soliton is proportional to the height, roughly, height of the wave, roughly. And so uh, if you have two solitons, like bigger one and smaller one, like this as an initial state, and uh, maybe arrow should be bigger. And uh, at some point, uh, the order of these two uh, solitons are interchanged because it is faster than the smaller. Then, um, the interesting thing for soliton is that and the shape of each wave uh, isn't changed, but the location of uh, these two uh, solitons are shifted a little bit after scattering. So in this case, on the location of a bigger one is push, push forward a little bit and, and the smaller one is pushed backward a little bit. So this is called a phase shift, and uh, this denotes the nonlinearity of the original equation. Uh, you know, uh, if the equation is linear, then uh, the superposition of uh, to each solu uh, solution uh, gives the uh, new solution. Just uh, we uh, add two solution. But in this case, um, because of this phase shift, that superposition uh, for a linear equation um, doesn't work. And so it shows this phase shift uh, is, shows the nonlinearity of this equation. Then um, there is a fact that um, so both uh, equations, KDV and total lattice, uh, have a solutions uh, given by Riemann state function or hyperelliptic curve. So the so, uh, so both have solutions uh, written. in terms of Riemann's for, for hyperliptic curve. So uh, the genus of hyperliptic curves are uh, and the moduli of the, uh, these curves uh, parameterize uh, the solution. Then um, to get soliton solution, 
So we have a hyperelliptic curve with of genus G, for example. And uh, to get the soliton solution, we uh, oh, degenerate this curve as, as this. Uh, so we identify uh, two points. So we degenerate uh, this uh, each hole of donut. And uh, by using this degeneration, uh, this solution written in terms of Riemann set function is degenerate uh, hyperlipid curve lambda, for example, and degenerate it as that. We get. G soliton solution. And uh, this uh, phenomenon is detailed studied by Mumford. And so Mumford, uh, they, there is a very famous book, Tata Lectures. And if you interested in this uh, phenomena, please uh, refer Tata to. Uh, G is bigger than one. Yeah. 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 Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Equal to one or bigger than zero. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, so there is a solution for uh, genus zero curve. There, there is, but um, so now I'm interested in soliton solution. So I'd like to explain how to get soliton solution in algebra geometrical way. So there is a rational solution too for this equation. Yeah. Um, by using, uh, how to say, we can uh, degenerate the curve more, more singular curve. Like if, if we have such a singular curve, then we get rational solution characterized by the Schuba function. So this was a um, very historical story for this equation. And uh, I'd like to draw an overview of my talk from now. So we started with KDB and total lattice. Total lattice. Uh, maybe, maybe it's this. No, it's I changed the board. <laughs> I have KDB. KDB and total lattice. And from now, I will introduce their discrete version. So discrete KDB and discrete TODA for short. So actually, it's highly non-trivial problem to introduce good discretization of this uh, differential or differential difference equation. And so we hope to have this equation um, via some appropriate continuous limit. And we want to preserve the soliton solution and the symmetry like this. Then, um, yes, right, yes, both, yes. Uh, for total lattice, uh, the space is already discretized. Yeah, but uh, for KDB, we want to discretize both. And so this is highly non-trivial problem. And amazingly, if you choose one of uh, discretization, so algebra geometrical structure of uh, for the original uh, equation like that uh, is preserved. So. A very similar story can apply to this one. Um, and uh, moreover, uh, there is a nice structure for this discrete system uh, by using combinatorics. 
And this is what I'd like to emphasize in my talk this, uh, in this occasion, networks. And moreover, there is another limit of tropicalization. Um, or this uh, equation. Actually, these are uh, giving us some rational map, and we can tropicalize it by taking some up valuation, and we get uh, ultra discrete or tropical um, of side of this equation. So here, ultra discretization means that uh, if uh, so. After tropicalization, we can require uh, the dependent variables for this dynamical system to be uh, integers, or we can reduce uh, only a small subset of integers, like uh, zero and one, especially for KDV equation. So such a restriction of the variable, dependent variables is called ultra discretization. So not only the coordinate of space time, but also the value of dynamics uh, can be restricted to the lattice points. So, so we, uh, I will uh, go to this um, ultra discretization later. And interestingly, uh, the algebraic geometry can be replaced with tropical geometry here. And uh, we expect that the initial value problem for this piece of the linear equation is uh, solved by using a uh, tropical Lehman state function. And uh, moreover, there is another side of this story. Um, and this is uh, the goal of my talk. So there is an interesting uh, cello automaton called box ball system, uh, BBS for short. So uh, this is very combinatorial model. So um, the form, it has uh, various formulation, but one of them is related to this uh, ultra discrete equation. So by using piecewise linear uh, equation, this system can be described. And amazingly, uh, the symmetry of this system uh, is described by using a limit of the representation of quantum group or the crystal based theory. So, and the, this can be, uh, the symmetry is described by using uh, this theory. So uh, moreover, uh, the initial value problem for this automaton is solved by using a combinatorial map called uh, Kelov restricting correspondence. So for AKR for short. So uh, these, uh, uh, these two are closely uh, related. So actually, um, it is shown that uh, the time evolution of box ball system is linearized uh, on uh, tropical Jacobian. And its spectral curve, uh, so its spectral curve is given by the uh, tropicalization of the spectral curve uh, for ultra discrete KDV equation. So uh, tropical geometry, uh, both the tropical geometry and these things, these combinatorial things, uh, how to say, meet uh, in this dynamical system, finally. So um, this is an overview of my story. And uh, because the time is limited, I don't explain all of these things, and, but also the following topics. So in the next uh, step, I introduce two discrete systems like this, and I explain how uh, the combinatorial uh, thing. 
uh, network describes this system. Actually, and uh, integrability, the symmetry, uh, is preserved by this uh, tropical elevation, and it is actually it is uh, amazing uh, because this limit. Um, to say, we forget many information of the original system by this limit, but in this case, and because of some nice combinatorial structure, and many important property about symmetry uh, survives in this limit, and uh, we can get a parallel story for the uh, systems. Then, uh, this is our first story, and next I go to this box ball system system, and I introduce uh, several basic um, property for box ball system, and I explain uh, this pair of KKR map. Actually, it is very interesting uh, map. Uh, so I'd like to introduce this one, and um, I show the uh, linearization of this system by using this map, and finally, I relate uh, these things with tropical geometry. So, I explain this part and this part. Okay, then I'd like to remark that uh, recently uh, many combinatorial things like network um, are applied to uh, define or reformulate uh, many discrete equations by using rational maps. So, for example, besides network, uh, we have a uh, DIMA model or cluster algebra. So they include an uh, interesting rational map by construction, and they can be applied to define this thing. And it was very, it's very effective to uh, study symmetry by using this combinatorial uh, tools. So this is the end of my introduction. So I next go to the main part. So I want to, oh, it's not oh, green. So discretization. And network. So first I introduce a uh, discretization of KDV and the lattice. So uh, discrete KDV was introduced by uh, Hirota in 1977. So um, he was um, interested uh, in the discretization of soliton solution, and he invented the way to discretize uh, many soliton equations systematically by using what is called tau function. I don't uh, explain about the tau function today, and, but uh, finally, the discrete KDV is, it looks like this. So U is again uh, the dependent variables, and it depends on discrete time and uh, space. So 
UD plus one UK, it is a value at discrete time space K at time T plus one uh, is delta over U2 T plus one K minus one equal U T K minus one plus delta U T like this. So delta is a parameter uh, you use uh, in taking a continuous limit of time or space. Actually, the continuous limit to get the original uh, KDB is very tricky. <laughs> so it, it's so tricky. So I, I'd like to omit uh, this part for today. And so, but um, the original equation uh, is discretized as this. It is a highly non-trivial thing. And uh, moreover, for discrete solar lattice, um, the continuous limit is not very tricky. Yeah, <laughs> good question. <laughs> but, but, for example, if you, uh, how to say, move this term to the left-hand side and uh, by using the Taylor expansion, a third derivative appears naturally. Yeah. So for, for the lattice, uh, it was introduced by uh, also Hirota and uh, Tsujimoto. Uh, 1995. And uh, the equation is a pair of two equations. So now we use uh, two uh, types of dependent variables, W and Q. And first equation is like this, W T plus one K minus one plus U K T plus one is a W and T K plus U T K. This is the first equation. And second one is uh, WK T plus one times uh, QK T plus one is um, WTK times QTK minus one, like this. And uh, K and T both are integers. Then uh, its continuous limit is taken as this. So we replace uh, WTK with uh, delta uh, square times exponential XK plus one minus XK. We replace this one and we replace Q with one plus delta times and the first derivative of K in the continuous setting. So, by using this replacement, and we assume uh, xk is now xk delta t. So delta here is an infinitesimal parameter to make a continuous limit of time. And uh, by taking a limit, delta goes to zero, then we get the original equation. It's, it's very easy. So you can see that uh, this, so this, uh, sorry, this minus this is nothing but the right hand side of the equation, and and so on. So uh, we are interested in the symmetry of these equations, and amazingly, uh, these two discretization have uh, common structures.
So we are interested in uh, the lux pair for these systems, basically. And uh, lux matrices uh, for these systems are formulated as follows. So uh, for later usage and for, uh, uh, how to say, the convenience of the description, from now I assume uh, the periodicity in sp space coordinate. So space uh, coordinate K now takes a value Z modulo L. So L is a period. Then uh, we introduce uh, L by L matrix Q uh, depends on, depending on A, it is a L tuple of variables from A1 to AL and also depends on the spectral parameter Y. So it is L by L matrix. At the diagonal we have A, and uh, in one lower uh, part of this diagonal, uh, this matrix, we have one here, and we have Y at Y, L, uh, and three. And so I also use matrix P, and uh, this is uh, the Q zero. So all A is now zero to define Q, uh, P, Sorry, but it depends on Y actually. And so, um, so it is a, a cyclic matrix. So it's easy to check P to L is Y times identity matrix. And I will use uh, P to L minus one later. So it has a form as, um, we have zero at diagonal and y in upper line, and we have one here. I will use this matrix later. Then, uh, by using this matrix Q and P, uh, we can formulate the lux pair, lux matrix for this equation. It is a very easy lemma. That the first claim is that a discrete KDV is equivalent to the following matrix equation. So Q U T plus one times Q um, delta over U T plus one is Q delta over U T times Q U T. So here, UT means uh, the dependent variables from U1T to ULT, like this. So, and the next, the KDV equation is formulated as, for, uh, sorry, discrete total equation is formulated as follows. So P to L minus one, and this is this one, uh, times Q, Q, T, times Q, T, the uh, W, T. I will uh, define Q, T, the soon. And is Q, T, the W, T plus one, times P to L minus one, times Q, Q, T plus one. So um, this matrix equation gives this that pair of equation to define discrete total lattice. So here Q tilde Q tilde A is defined to be P inverse Q A P, and it uh, this uh, adjoint action of P. Uh, gives a shift at diagonal. So 
So A L A one like this. Just just this one. So it is easy to check uh, the these equivalence by writing down uh, the uh, matrix equation uh, naively. No, I, I, they include y always. And yeah, we uh, regard this matrix equation as, uh, how to say, like for the including y. It, so I, I show the example. It's easier to show in the case of discrete KDB. Uh, A2 and AL, A1. So diagonal part is just shifted by one. Yeah. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, this is P2, L minus one. P two L minus one. P P two L is almost identity matrix yeah. by the definition. Yes, yes, right. It's uh, just a power. Yeah, yeah. So so I I, I have introduced many things <laughs> at the same time. Yeah. So uh, this is a L by L identity matrix. Yeah. So uh, let's check uh, this uh, matrix equation, for example. So left hand side is so L by L matrix. And at the diagonal, we have delta in this case. Because uh, roughly this time, this is delta. So we have delta diagonal part, maybe. And for example, uh, for 2, 1 entry, uh, we have delta over u1 plus u2, like this. And of diagonal part, we have this kind of formula. And uh, at uh, the second of diagonal part, we have 1, like this. And we have at the diagonal, we have delta. And um, at this part, at the corner, we have y times uh, u1 plus delta over ul, like this. And second corner, we have y, like this. So um, this is the left-hand side, and with time t plus 1. So I abbreviate t plus 1 in this picture, but so we have t plus 1. And in the right hand side, we have a very similar uh, form, but we interchange these two. And uh, time is t now. So, for example, at the diagonal, we have delta. And for example, this part at 2, 1 entry, uh, we have um, u1 plus uh, delta over u2 at time t. And so the equality of these two parts gives uh, the example delta over u1 time t plus 1 plus t plus 1 is uh, u1 t plus delta over u2. Like this. So this is nothing but the, uh, this discrete product equation. So uh, in this way, you see that uh, this uh, spectral parameter um, doesn't require any restriction. It's just a variable. So 
uh, excuse me. This, yes? On diagonal, we have delta. Uh, under the diagonal, we have, uh, yes, yes, delta over u2 plus u3, and, and so on, by shifting by one. And the final part is this one, the cyclically. Yeah. So uh, this is what happens here. And also for discrete total lattice, we have the same uh, phenomena. But because we have this one, so <laughs> calculation is a little bit complicated, but you can do it. Then uh, once we get um, this uh, matrix equation, uh, we uh, get Lux form uh, as a corollary. So from the first one, we, yes. Ah, it, I will explain the rule of white. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it gives a spectral curve as a characteristic polynomial for this matrix. Yeah, uh, not, not this one, but for Lux matrix. So uh, we rewrite um, this equation by multiplying uh, some matrix uh, Q from the right, like this. So originally it was, I just uh, write again, so it was Q. Like this, and we multiply Q delta over U T from the right. And so we want to get on the following types of equation. So a Lux equation of discrete time should have the form like this. Lt plus one, the Lux matrix at time t is uh, written as this, the adjoint action of some matrix M. So we want to, have, want to have this kind of formula. And by looking at this equation, you see that the Lux matrix at time t plus one should be this one, um, because by comparing this part with this one, uh, we identify this part as LT. And this part is identified with MT, for example. So in this way, you see that LT plus one is MT times LT times MT inverse. So like this form. So this is a, a disc, uh, Lux form of discrete time. And we call on this uh, the Lux matrix for discrete total lattice. So, once we have this uh, this kind of formula, uh, we get a trace of any power of the Lux matrix uh, doesn't depend on time, mean, namely like this. So it means a trace of any power of the Lux matrix is uh, are preserved again. So, uh, not always, maybe, but ge generically it is inverted, yeah. And for discrete toner, uh, we multiply um, for this one. Um, uh, some Q tilde from the left this time. So originally we have um, like this. And uh, we multiply uh, Q tilde uh, tilde 
WT from the left, from the left, and again we want want to have this uh, types of formula inside this equation, and you see that um, this part is LT, and um, this part is LT plus one, and this part is MT. Also, uh, we now have M inverse in front, but it doesn't matter. So we see uh, that, again, the Lux matrix for this system is this one. So uh, for simplicity, I define Lux matrix or to the lattice by multiplying Y in front uh, because uh, this equation, please recall that Q tilde is defined by this form. So we have the inverse Q because we have this one. So we have P to L here. So this is nothing but uh, identity here and Q, Q, T. So uh, by setting this one, we see that Lux matrix is now uh, P inverse Q W T times Q Q T. It is simpler, so I define uh, L in this form from now. So as I explained, uh, so the any power, a trace of any power of Lux matrix is preserved, then uh, it means that uh, because the ad advantage uh, now we put uh, this periodicity uh, comes now. So the characteristic equation for Lux matrix uh, is preserved. So determinant of uh, L, T, it depends on the spectral determinant of Y minus uh, X is uh, preserved. It doesn't depend on time. Then, and the zero of this characteristic polynomial uh, gives the spectral curve for um, this discrete system. Finally, I'd like to explain briefly the algebraic geometrical uh, structure for this discrete system. <coughs> Both um, discrete KDV and total lattice a discrete total lattice um, as a hyperelliptic curve as a spectral curve in generically. And uh, we can solve the initial value problem for this equation. As follows. So uh, let uh, psi be a map from the phase space of the system. So in discrete carry V, it is uh, C to L, and for Toda, it is C to 2L. So now uh, we uh, consider a complex value for dependent variables. And from phase space to the space of spectral curves, uh, given by the characteristic polynomial, uh, the zero of the characteristic polynomial of the Lux matrix. And if you pick uh, some F is zero, roughly, uh, from this space, its fiber is preserved. Um, by time evolution, so psi inverse f is called the isolated set. So 
So we are interested in the algebraic geometrical structure for this set, and what we want to write down the initial value problem uh, for this discrete system. So uh, the result is that so for a generic f, generic polynomial in x and y, say uh, the corresponding uh, curve is smooth, then uh, we can safely construct the map, Abel Jacobi map, from the i server set to uh, the Jacobian variety of gamma. So, for generic f of gamma is given by uh, f is zero. Good job. Zero, vector curve. It is uh, embedding. And and the dynamics is linearized, linearized on a Jacobian variety. So originally, the time evolution is nonlinear phenomena in this uh, setting, but by using our Jacobi map. And on Jacobian, it is just a straight motion. Yes, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah, we just uh, make a complex version. Yeah. Yes. And so, uh, actually, the inverse of this average Jacobi map. Uh, gives the solution for initial value problem, and its inverse is uh, given by again a Riemann state function for this uh, gamma. So this is this is what happens to this system. Um, and so actually, um, there is a very uh, educative uh, and comprehensive paper by uh, Van Moebeck and Manford. Uh, in 1979, um, it describes uh, algebraic geometrical structure of the Lux matrix uh, given by the following formula systematically. So we have P2K for any K, and we have uh, multiplication of many Q, so from K1, K2 um, to Km, for example. So it depends on three parameters, k and the number of q, so m, and the periodicity l. So for any k, m, l, um, they study the, this, this map. They don't describe about the dynamics, only uh, Lux matrix, but uh, by, based on their result, uh, we can study uh, general. KML cases systematically. This paper is very interesting from the viewpoint of uh, in discrete in the world system. So uh, this is the end of my first lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.